معكم محمد سيام واليوم كيف تكون الرياض حتى نحكي عن أجدد هاي سيزين هاي هاي Hello everyone. Mini series. So, following the success of MediaCast Virtual Summit that we did in Dubai last November. And with our recently concluded Sanal Sirve Istanbul, which is our version of Virtual Summit that we held in Turkey last week, we are following it up, following it up with a mini series of Virtual Summit. And what a way to kickstart that is with our session today about web broadcasting. So my name is Lawrence. A lot of you guys know me as Larry, and I'll be with you today, hosting a very good friend of ours from Black Magic Design. And today, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be a whole me in the whole, whole one hour of this session. But we have our guest right now from Black Magic Design, Mr. Darren Gosney. And he is live right now from Manchester. How are you, Hi, Darren? Larry. I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you doing today? So, yeah, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our, you know, mini virtual summit session today. So, um, Darren, can you uh tell us more about yourself about for our viewers sake yeah absolutely yeah so um i've been working with with black magic design now for the past 10 years um i've worked in a number of different roles within uh within black magic design in both uh technical roles and in a sales capacity um as well but right now um, i manage a team of technical sales specialists across our entire range of products from post production to digital cinema and obviously uh, live production as well which we'll be talking a little bit um about today um prior to black magic um i was working in live production as well so i used to be a live studio camera operator for manchester united um and i worked in another a number of other technical roles um, as well whilst at the club and in in previous roles as well so for me live production very much runs through my blood it's what um is what i'm uh, kind of what i'm used to and i've got over a decade of experience in in working in and around live production roles and that's a that's a lot of uh, experience in live production and that's that's actually what we really need right now because i think today is a conversation full of about live production, specifically web broadcasting, which has taken a lot of, you know, uh, grounds and has taken a lot of interest, especially during the pandemic. I, I know it's weird that we're still talking about pandemic, uh, even if it's more than a year now. Uh, so let's just, you know, start this and kick off this session. So I have some uh, very important or interesting questions for you. And the first one is, I think, I think it resonates a lot with what we feel as, uh, as you know, black magic users and representatives of black magic design in the region, uh, because as a company, uh, as a black magic, as a company, you've brought a lot of live production and web broadcasting tools for, for, for our market. You know, you've provided solutions for our market for that, and you know, my my question is, you know, what. What changes have you recognized in this space, you know, specifically over the last few years? Mm. Yeah, I think it's it's a really really important question to, to to start with, to be honest, because you can be you can be forgiven for for thinking that that web broadcast has become a, a really big thing over the past twelve months due to um, due to the pandemic, and the pandemic has certainly shone a light on the the need for um, web broadcasting solutions and companies and, and businesses to move um, towards web broadcasting to deliver content to their customers or to reach their customers, for example. Example. But it's a growth space that we've been seeing and recognizing over the last 15 years or so. So um, just to jump onto this um, quick graphic just here, um, three areas specifically that we want to, to focus on when we're looking at the, the web broadcasting trajectory. 
Um, as a market, it's something that's been growing over the last 15 years, and that's thanks largely to um, internet technology and the improvements in internet technology um, and what it offers um, to uh, businesses, to services that want to, to share their information and to reach uh, to reach their customers. Um, we've now got kind of social media platforms, video sharing platforms and over the top delivery platforms such as Netflix, such as Amazon Prime, for example. And it's involved into so many forms with which is accessible from so many different devices. It's now difficult to imagine a world where we don't wouldn't be able to access um, video over all of these these different platforms. And there's a number of different applications that um, can be um, can kind of take benefit and take use of, of, of this kind of video sharing these days. Um, obviously, we've got a huge number of examples on screen just there um, from web conferencing tools like we're using um, today. Um, people are utilizing web broadcast for product demonstrations now because they can reach many more customers in the same space of time rather than visiting all of their different clients. Um, you can train your customers remotely and do that online. And then you've got some other emerging markets that have come through in the last few years, like esports and and e gaming and things like that. And then you've got all your kind of special interests uh, and hobbyist content um, as well. The kind of things that that I would watch would be kind of sports and uh, and, and running channels because that's something that I'm um, particularly into myself. Um, but yeah, you can't kind of talk about web broadcasting um, this kind of in this point in time without discussing what's happened over 2020 and uh, and 2021. So we're seeing a shift in the way that people uh, are having to work now. The pandemic has shaken up the AV industry massively over the last 12 months, and it has represented a turning point for the way that people approach their their work these days. Whether that's working from home, um, smart working, remote attendance, these are all things that that businesses now are having. To to uh, to consider um, and whilst you, you kind of you might think that you have to be in a specific central location to deliver content we now realize that that isn't the case and as a manufacturer we know that we can um, we can help these workflows we can provide um, products to to individuals to allow them to to work remotely um, and our developers our product development team are very much looking at the way that the landscape is changing and ensuring that we have products to to meet um, the demands um, of customers who are who are find themselves working in these particular environments. Mm -hmm. And um, you've mentioned a very good uh, point about uh, content creators. And I think we, we know, you know, as Black Magic Design and as MediaCast ourselves, we, we know a lot of content creators in the market right now. And like what they say, content is king, right? So uh, a, lot of, a lot of them are really uh, working to create their own content. So, and most of the time when we meet these people, they, or when we meet these clients, they are really looking at creating contents that's for their, uh, mostly on video on demand, you know, they post it in their social mm -hmm. media, in YouTube, Vimeo, and, and that. But how, how important it is for content creators to live stream? Why, why would they consider it? Yeah, well, the first thing you've got to to think about as a as a content creator is is what what is your goal? Um, what do you want to achieve from from live streaming? And I think we can loosely break that down into into three specific areas. So for most people, um, what they want to do is um, they want to achieve a profit. So it might be that their business um, is reliant on um, on them obviously bringing profit in. Um, so the main goal of of pushing content out over the web might be to bring in a profit. Um, the second kind of core reason for doing it is to provide a service. So it might be that they physically want to um, provide a service to their customers, something they've not been able to do um, online might be they now need to deliver that service remotely. Um, a personal example for myself is my wife and I are expecting our first baby um, in a number of weeks and things like antenatal classes, which normally would have been in person, have now had to shift online. So we've done all of our antenatal classes, learning how we're going to become parents. We've been doing that over um, Zoom and Skype and other video conferencing applications. So that's a way that um, the NHS in the UK has been able to provide um, a service remotely. And the third um, type of, of content is that hobbyist content that I mentioned um, just before. So lots of us um, subscribe to channels that are based on specific hobbies um, and people actually are, are pushing out content based on on their own hobbies to kind of grow um, their network of, of, of friends and peers within a particular space. And the things that 
people will often want to think about and should be considering um, when they're either starting out in live streaming or um, wanting to enhance their their live streaming um, offerings to their customers is um, what do you want to establish, build um, and maintain? Um, first thing to kind of touch on is recognition. Um, now, it's one of the hardest things to, to achieve in such a busy market of, of live streaming. If you're just starting out, how do you differentiate yourself um, from the crowd? And there's a few tools that we'll show you in a, in a moment which can help with that. And that's things like having your own um, specific branding, your own specific logo, for example. Something that's easily recognizable when someone views your content, they know it's you because they recognize um, the branding, for example. Um, that you could kind of be more creative and, and having things um, like animated graphics layered uh, laid across your um, across your stream. You can have things like pictures in picture things like that just to enhance that communication style um, then you want to build your your reputation so reputation relies heavily on that consistency um, of delivery of content quality of content um, and getting that out through different platforms so with our webcasting solutions um, we want to kind of give you the broadcast tools that we've um, we've kind of established over many many years of working with big broadcasters across various countries in uh, Europe Middle East and Africa and around the world um, and take those broadcast tools and bring those down to, to everybody else to enable you to um, to build your reputation through very very high quality programming that you can you can put together yourself and then you need to have the reach um, so that's really important being able to reach all of your customers and actually get the content um, in front of, of customers um, and that could be through um, delivering to multiple platforms simultaneously or delivering to specific platforms for example and as a manufacturer what we offer is 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 years and years of experience in building these products um, for highest for the highest end broadcast um, customers um, we've got experience with working with them um, but as I say what we want to do is bring those tools to everybody and make these tools accessible to everybody so something that's really important is having products available at the various different um, price brackets to enable lots of people to get into live streaming perhaps for the first time but then we also offer products which step up through the range to enable further tools um, further features to enhance those production values but we do have products to suit every single budget and the great thing is that they're quick to learn uh, fast to learn and easy to operate so you can get your hands on them and establish how the product works very very quickly and be up and running and streaming to your audience really really quickly as well and the products are proven reliable. So again, because we've been working with a number of broadcasters for many, many years in environments which are mission critical, you need to have 24 seven reliability. Our products are tried and, and tested um, within, um, within those spaces. And then the final thing that is really important is scalability. So as you are growing and as your brand grows, you'll find that you um, that you have a number um, of kind of extra demands potentially on, on what your production needs. Um, so the ability to scale up and add products on like a kind of Lego build set um, allows you to kind of scale your uh, production to suit. Yeah, actually, you've uh, you've put a very important point there about, you know, uh, you know, for for them to be able to easily use it. Uh, it's an easy to use product. So, you know, when they get their hands on to that equipment such as this, you know, they can easily just, you know, run with it with a, you know, of course it needs some, you know, background on how to really use it, but it's not really a very, or you know, what they call a rocket science kind of uh, operation because, you know, it, it can easily do uh, live streaming right away. And at the same time, the reliability factor, which is like what you said, you know, black magic design has been in the industry serving even broadcast customers that are using our products of both e for live production even you know even some other products because black magic is not just live production there are a lot of other uh products that are within the black magic uh, spectrum and mm -hmm. um and obviously right now we're doing a proof of concept wherein we are running the live stream using black magic products and uh, i think I think it's best that if you can walk us through your setup right now. Definitely, yeah. So first and foremost, let me show you what I have um, at home. So just for the sake of, um, of kind of explaining, um, 
my setup here. So I'm actually working from home at the moment, as as many of us are. Um, I'm, I'm stuck at home, um, having to um, social distance from from colleagues, etc. So I've set up a small little studio um, in inside my little home office um, here, uh, and that's made up of a pocket camera uh, with a microphone attached. Um, I've got my A10 Mini Pro. Um, and then I've got my laptop connected. So the laptop is um, feeding in a, a keynote presentation that I'm showing to you today. Um, the camera is obviously in front of me um, and you can see that in the picture in picture at the moment on the screen. That's going into the A10 Mini Pro. Um, and then the A10 Mini Pro is also connected via USB-C into the laptop. And what that allows me to do is um, the A10 Mini Pro is seen as a webcam um, via Skype to deliver to you today. So it's a really kind of simple and effective way to enhance your um, web conferencing setup and be able to deliver that out to the web. But one thing I wanted to show today um, was just to have a, a quick um, kind of tour of the of the ATEM software to show you some of the cool things that, that we can do. Um, so again, just to very quickly run through some of the um, the features um, of, of the ATEM Mini Pro, and I can show you things like picture-in-picture, -picture, chroma key setups, etc. So if it's okay, I'll, I'll dive into the, um, the ATEM control software and show you some of those things, if that's cool. Go ahead. You know, most of our yeah. viewers are waiting for that, actually. So I switch it <laughs> this back is the to exciting part where we, Yeah, the exciting part where we find out more and more about the, the products and what they can do. So just jumping um, into my computer um, for a moment, what I'm running here is just the... Um, the ATEM software control. So this is utilized to work across all of the ATEM um, produ production switches that we that we offer. Um, everything I'm showing you here today is going to be um, utilizing my ATEM Mini Pro. Uh, and all of the features, bar a couple of them, are available in all of the, the ATEM Mini switches. And if we get to a point where I'm going to talk about something specific to the ATEM Mini Pro, I'll highlight that so you know exactly um, what it, which features are only available in that and the, the higher models. But the A10 Mini Pro is essentially the second product in the range. You start with the A10 Mini, then we have the A10 Mini Pro. So the first thing we mentioned in terms of important things that you want to build um, when you're, you're live streaming is your recognition. How do you become easily identified um, to your viewers and to your customers? Well, the first thing you can do is to create graphics um, and have things like um, name straps, lower thirds, logos, etc. And there's some really easy and simple ways in which you can build um, graphics and drop them into the A10 Mini. The, now, the first of those is to create um, a white on black background. So for the purposes of um, this today, I've just created a um, graphic here. I'm just turn my picture in picture off. I've just created a, a graphic um, with my name on there, my title on a black background. So what I can do is... I can go to the media page of the ATEM switcher. I've actually already preloaded that in because just to save going through my library. I can drop that in as the active um, media um, on the um, on the, the ATEM Mini Pro. So that's the active piece of media right now. If I jump back into the switcher page, what I can now do is utilize my downstream keyer. And the downstream keyer is basically the top layer of, of graphics on here. Um, and I can change my fill source to Media Player 1, which is exactly um, what we just had on screen. Um, and then I can change my key source to black. And what I'm effectively telling it to do here is to remove the black part of the image. So Media Player 1 is that graphic I've just dropped in. And the black is going to be keyed out. So you should see this on air. And if I hit on air now, you'll see that my name has appeared across the bottom of the screen. So when I come back to myself um, on screen as well, you'll see that also the um, the name tag is, is still on there because it's the downstream key. So it's the last thing that's that's on the screen um, before um, before uh, going out to air. Now, I'll just jump back into the software for a second because that's all good. It's a really easy and quick way to make a graphic, but it's quite rudimentary um, and it relies on the fact that we're removing all of the black from the image and, and leaving everything else. So the great thing about the ATEM is that it actually also recognizes transparency in graphics. So if you have Photoshop or you're familiar with using Photoshop and you can create a graphic with a transparent layer, it will also allow you to use transparent, um, you also recognize the transparency within those graphics and apply those to the image. So just jumping back in here again, um, just jump to my finder and close this off. 
Um, I've just created a quick Black Magic Design logo here. And again, this is just created in Photoshop. Um, it's transparent, but you'll notice there's black in the image, there's gray, and there's different colors as well. So I couldn't have used this with the previous um, method because it would have removed the black text from here. So I've just created a logo, transparent background. And again, I'm just gonna dive into the ATEM software control. I'll turn that off there so we lose that graphic for a second. But if I go into my media page, here's that transparent logo I just showed you a second ago and I've just dropped that in. Now I'm gonna go back to the switcher and still use Media Player One, but use the Media Player One key as well, which is now going to look for the transparency. And if I turn that on air, you can see I get the nice Flat Magic Design logo in the top corner, and you should see that now. And that's gonna, again, that's gonna track with whichever um, source I have on screen. It's gonna be the top layer because it's a downstream key, so you can see that's on there. So it's just a really simple and effective way to create um, recognition through graphics. It's a really, really, really simple tool to use, but really effective so customers recognize your branding and, and recognize what it is that you want to do. So another thing that I've been using quite a lot throughout this presentation is the picture in picture effect. So I've been using my um, my DVE to create a picture in picture effect. Now this is great if you are um, delivering a presentation like we are today and you want to have a slideshow um, on screen, but also deliver uh, or allow the audience to be able to see you and interact with you at the same time. So I'll just jump back into the software. Um, I'll turn off my um, graphic for the time being just so it doesn't cover anything else up that it doesn't need to. And the picture in picture is found um, within the upstream keys. So I go into my upstream keys, and this just basically means everything before the transition. Um, and then I just need to go to DVE, which stands for digital video effect. It's a, it's a broadcast terminology, but this is how we, um, we create the picture in picture. I'm selecting camera two because that's um, my pocket camera input into my switcher. And then I can turn that on air. Now, the good thing is that we can position this anywhere on screen. So um, I've actually got buttons on my A10 Mini Pro so I can move myself around the screen um, to show you there and just to very quickly show you where they live. I'm just going to drop this onto here and pull up a still so you can see it. So you, you can now see my picture in picture controls on the panel and that's exactly um, where they live on there. So. Picture in picture is a really, really useful tool because as I say, it allows you to still engage with the audience but show them something on screen at the same time. But there's really cool things you can do with this as well. Um, so for example, I can mask this. So right now on bottom left, um, but as you can see, there's uh, the space either side of, um, of myself that I might be covering up part of uh, my software interface and I might want to limit the amount of, of, of how much I actually cut off. So in this instance, I might decide to actually take a little bit of off the edge of there. I could actually probably go to five on that one um, and just crop that. And you'll see the right hand side has been cropped of my picture in picture. I'm going to do the same on the left hand side and just drop that in. And I can probably afford to take off maybe one off the top as well. So I've just reduced the size of, um, of that picture in picture to allow you to see more of my user interface, which might be really handy if you're, um, if you're doing software, um, software based presentations and you want to, to limit the amount that you, um, that you show there. Now that's really cool. And I'm just going to punch back to, um, putting that on air again. I'm going to turn that mask off for a second because I don't need to mask myself anymore. Um, you, there's, Really cool things you can do um, with that, as I say. If you do step up to the larger A10 Minis, this is an extra feature of the A10 Mini Extremes, is that you can have up to four picture in picture, which can be really useful um, if you're doing um, multiple people are participating in a session and you might want to have four cameras on screen simultaneously. So on the A10 Mini, A10 Mini Pro and A10 Mini Pro ISO, you have a single picture in picture. But with the A10 Mini Extremes, you do have Super Source, which allows you to put um, four on screen at the same time. And just to give you an indication of what that could look like, um, I'll just throw this on screen. So for example, you could have um, a background artwork or background graphic and have up to four cameras on screen simultaneously. But that's only with the A10 Mini and A10 Mini, sorry, the A10 Mini Extreme and A10 Mini Extreme ISO models.
So um, next thing you might be doing if if you're using the A10 Mini or you're getting into web streaming for things like esports productions, um, you might want to utilize things like green screen. Um, now, green screen is most commonly used for applications such as weather reports, for example, and effectively it's a way to eliminate the entire background um, using a single color. Um, but that's really useful if you are getting into esports and e-gaming, for example, and quite often we see customers wanting to, um, to overlay themselves on top of their gameplay. Now, the picture in picture is great, but again, you might be covering up too much of the screen to actually um, be able to, sh to show all of what you want to show. Now, Unfortunately, I don't have a green screen here today. As you can see, I'm just sat in my, my home office and we've just got the brickwork behind me. So what I can do is I can cheat it a little bit. So I've created a, a graphic of me against the green screen. So just for the sake of, of this particular example, pretend that this is a live camera and it's me um, stood in front of a green screen. Now, what I will do is I will actually use the chroma key functionality um, of the switcher. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that my fill source is Media Player One, which is what we just selected there. And then I can take a sample. What the sample does is it allows us to pick that area of green or pick the particular color that we want to um, key out. And I, I know that obviously I was stood on the right hand side. So I'm going to key out the left hand side, which is the green screen. Um, and then I can hit on air. And as you can see, I've actually been able to key myself on top of the image. So just imagine that that's a live camera and I'm being keyed on top of that. So we do a bit of inception here and you can see I'm being keyed on top of myself in this instance. So that's great. Um, and that's brilliant if you if you want to be able to do that. But the reality is there as well is I can refine this and make this even better because if we're talking about using this for gameplay, I'm actually too big on screen right now. That takes up way too much space. So what we can do um, is we can use a feature called the um, the flying key. So what we can do here is, oh, you can see I've just actually repositioned there. So I can actually set positions of that individual um, key there. So the size can be changed. I can move that around. And I can put that, say, down here. So you'd still be able to see me. Um, I'd still be moving around um, on the screen. Um, but I can position it in a place where it's not going to uh, interfere too much with um, with what's going on on screen. And the great thing is you can set keyframes. So I could set that as my keyframe A. So that's where I want it to live when it's in that position. And then it might be that actually I want to run that to uh, full screen again as and when um, as and when I'm coming out of, of that mode. So I can actually just press a button and run that to, to full screen. So that could be me against another background. And then when I'm ready to go into the corner, I'm just going to run that to A and move that back. So that's just a really useful tool if you're um, using um, green screen or you're doing things like gaming, for example, to be able to uh, to have that um, on screen, um, the ability to key yourself on top of any of your incoming sources. So, couple, Loris, you have a question there because I'm going to jump into a couple of cool extra features, but go for it if you want to ask a question. Um, actually, I just want to highlight the fact that you said that you're at your home office and there are right now you know when we speak about live production you know it it there's no you know there's no set space you know looking back 10 years ago you know when we're in when you say live production you have to be in a studio in a in a production studio space in a tv station now everybody everyone can actually broadcast wherever they are and you know one good thing that you've pointed out you're at your lovely home in the uk and we are in our you know lovely office in in here in dubai so you know we, I, we I can... know where i'd rather be by the way okay <laughs> <laughs> i'd yeah. definitely rather be in dubai <laughs> uh but not now not today is a pretty sandy day so but yeah in other days yeah you're always welcome to you know to come over <laughs> so yeah i'll just go back to you and then yeah just continue showing the magic of uh of your item yeah, and we'll, we'll jump back because I think it's really important as well to talk about the entire setup and how we're connected to you, which I think we can come back to um, in a moment. I'll show a few more cool features um, and then we can dive back into that. So um, 
one of the the last couple of things I wanted to show you was um, was camera control. Um, so one of the things I'm doing today, um, let me just turn on my picture in picture again. Um, one of the things um, I'm doing today, as I mentioned, is using the Pocket Cinema camera um, to uh, as my live camera feed for this um, particular part of the section. Um, what we've got with when we're using our A10 minis is a really, really cool way to interact between the pocket cameras and um, the A10 range. And we allow camera control via that HDMI connection. So the HDMI feed that's coming into the switcher, we're also sending some commands back to the camera utilizing that same, um, that same HDMI cable, which gives us some really cool functionality um, over our pocket cameras. And then if we use other cameras from Blackmagic, we can also use converters to make it work as well. But I just wanted to highlight some of those really quickly. So I've got control over things like my um, pocket camera lens. So I've got things like um, focus control. So I can really mess up my focus if I wanted to here. And then I'm going to try and fix it live on air again. Luckily, I've got an autofocus feature, which allows me to um, to focus on the center of the image. So I've just fixed that again. Um, but I've got other controls over things like um, the iris of the camera and um, any additional gain I want to add into the camera. And then we can color shade the cameras as well. So I'm going to really drastic here and, and drag that over into the blue and you can see the immediate effect um, that's had. And I'm just going to reset that because otherwise I'll, uh, I'll look terrible. Um, but you've got real uh, complete control over the Blackmagic cameras that you have connected. So you can be quite creative and do things like increase saturation or, or decrease the saturation. Um, you can um, increase and decrease the contrast uh, and you've got full RGB controls there as well. So you can be super creative with um, the pocket cameras when they're working directly with the A10 Mini Pro. There's a practical use for that as well. So if you're using third party cameras as well as the pocket cameras, um, what, because cameras often, um, their sensors are very different. So you won't have exactly the same look across the cameras. The camera control will allow you to balance the pocket cameras with the um, third party cameras, for example. So it's a really nice way to um, make all of your cameras match. So it's not um, jarring to the audience when you jump between one camera and, uh, and the next camera. So the camera control features are really, really cool um, parts of this. And another thing that they add in as well is the ability to um, have tally on there. So whilst you can't see it on the pocket camera in front of me, I've got a nice big red light on the front, which is telling me that that's the camera that's currently on air right now. And that's obviously mirrored here as well, because at the moment I have software, which is coming in on camera one, and then we have my pocket camera on camera two. Now, the next thing um, to highlight of the software is the um, the built-in audio mixer, which is a really cool feature of, of A10 Minis because um, it allows you to bring in either embedded audio on your camera inputs, or you can bring in external audio from a microphone, for example. So right now in my setup, I do have a Rode microphone plugged into my uh, into my pocket camera, and that's just coming in via HDMI into um, into my A10 Mini Pro. And as you can see here, that's the one that's active right now because my camera's coming on input two with the embedded microphone. I have my master control over here. Um, what we can do and the, what, how I have it set up now is that is permanently set to on. Um, so that means that that's gonna be on regardless. But if we did have multiple cameras, perhaps in different locations or in different rooms, we might decide to have that set to AFV. And AFV means audio follows video. And in that instance, it means that when you cut to that camera, it brings the audio from that camera with it as well. So if you do have someone in a separate location, for example, and you're doing an interview, but you don't want their audio all the time, you can put them into audio follows video. And when you cut to that camera, that will come on air. So that's a really useful feature. And then you've also got um, the um, advanced um, audio mixer in here as well, which includes dynamics and EQ. So if you want to set thresholds and limiters for the audio, you can do so it doesn't reach a certain level or it doesn't surpass a certain level. Um, or you can reduce kind of lower frequencies to give your voice a warmer tone, for example. Um, so you've got some real creative choices around the audio as well as the, um, the video that you have on there and then lastly on the audio side of things um, you do also have the ability to um, delay the audio as well so if you do have a separate um, audio feed coming in not embedded into the into the camera feed then you can delay that by up to eight frames which is really handy when you're working with digital video and um, and uh, analog audio because analog audio will be faster than the digital um, video will travel so sometimes you want, might want to compensate with a little bit of delay 
Final feature before I do jump back to Lawrence for his uh, for his next question. Um, wanted to show the outputs of um, of the A10 Minis as well. So this is what something that's going to be um, on the A10 Mini Pro and above. So on your A10 Mini, if you go for the entry level, um, your output is via HDMI. So you've got HDMI video feed coming out of the the A10, and you can feed that to whatever you want. And you have a USB-C output which will feed into as we're doing here today. Um, your computer for streaming via USB-C as it's recognized as a webcam. But something additional within the um, A10 Mini Pro and above is the built-in streaming encoder. Now that's really, really useful if you want to directly stream to platforms like um, Facebook or YouTube um, or any of the other platforms, for example. Um, and all you need to do, if I go into the live stream tab here, you see we have a or we're presented with a list of available platforms. So the um, standard platforms that are included are Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter and uh, Restream. Um, but you can add custom um, services and custom URLs in as well. And then all you need to do is drop in the stream key and you can hit on air and you're immediately on air to those services. So that's a really good way um, if you're not using a web conferencing application to stream immediately um, to the platform of your choice as well. So that's just like a really quick rundown of, of some of the of the key features um, within um, within the ATEM uh, software control and some of the key features you can use and hopefully give you an insight as to some of the cool features you can use um, on your own streaming productions. Oh, thank you, thank you for that quick demo. Uh, you just you, you mentioned some of the features, but there's a lot of features here, you know for for someone to be really creative and then create something that basically is a production or a broadcast production quality uh, for their live stream. So that's, that's, in, that's really, really cool. Now, you know, we, we have some questions over the comment section of our Facebook feed uh, right now, but we're going to address all those questions later on uh, after our Q&A because we have a very limited time, but we will, we will answer all of them. Okay, so um, for for next question, so you've mentioned all these processes. Uh, you've mentioned the the Atom Mini software. So for someone who's who's trying to go into that, uh, okay. For example, if I'm a if I'm a content creator right now, I'm convinced. Okay, I'll I'll jump onto it. So what are the what are the equipment that someone should really look at to start with uh, in this live stream platform? Yeah, so I consider when I'm looking at any new live stream or to improve a, a live streaming solution, there's four key areas that, that I try to focus on to, to begin with. So the first of those is um, the first of those is your video sources. So what is it you actually want your end user to to to, to see? Um, and that could be something that's coming from a camera, something that's coming from a, a media player like one of our HyperDex, or it could just be the content from your PC or your Mac. So for example, today it's my um, my keynote presentation that I'm pushing into the, this as well. The second thing to consider is your capture device or your interface. So this is the physical um, box or physical product which gets your video into the computer ready to, to stream out to the web. The third thing is your streaming engine um, or your software layer. So this could be um, the, the physical streaming uh, engine that lives within our A10 Mini. Or if you're going into a capture device into a computer, it's a software layer, something like OBS, which does the encoding for you uh, and gets it into a stream friendly format ready to be pushed out to the internet. And then your fourth thing to consider is your actual streaming platform. So where is it that you want um, your viewers to, to be viewing this content? Um, so those are the four particular key areas. And I think we can break it down uh, again and, and look at the different types of, of applications that you'd be working in. So for example, if you take something like web conferencing, which is the most kind of simplified setup potentially of, of, of what it is you might be doing. Um, web conferencing, whilst you can use a built-in webcam, we've all been on, on conference calls over the last 12 months where someone's got uh, just their built-in webcam, um, bright light behind them, and all you can see is this really dark silhouette and you can't see the person's face. And that's because built-in webcams are generally of a lower quality, have a kind of um, Less, lesser quality sensors that um, uh, are less sensitive to light. Um, so you might want to utilize a higher quality camera, whether that be um, a DSLR from another brand or whether it be a Blackmagic camera, you might want to step up um, the quality of, of your camera. 
And the easiest way to get that in is just to use something like our Web Presenter HD, which is seen to the computer as a webcam device. So it utilizes a webcam chip inside it. And then the software application just sees it as a webcam. So it doesn't realize you've got a really high quality camera attached to it. It just thinks it's a, a straight webcam. Because the problem is with your DSLRs or your high quality cameras, they don't have webcam outputs. Generally, they've got HDMI output or an SDI output. So that might be where you use something like a, a web presenter, for example, to, to bring the stream um, into, into the, the computer for streaming. Then you've got things like webcasting. So similar to what we've done today, um, but you might be stepping it up and, and having a camera plus a games console or a camera plus um, a, a keynote presentation, for example. And then you might want to stream out to platforms such as Twitch. So if you're a gamer, then then Twitch might be your platform of choice for this. So your your video sources, your cameras and your console, um, the A10 Mini Pro will be acting as um, your capture device and your streaming engine. Um, and then you're pushing that out to, to Twitch, for example. Um, so that's a really, a really cool thing that you can do. And then you can step it up one step further and go all out. So we're kind of going through the scales of, of live production here. Um, and you could have multiple cameras plus a, a laptop source um, going in through something like the A10 Mini Pro with a, an external audio mix coming in and then pushing the stream out to the web. So you've got real um, real scalability here in terms of the solutions that you can that you can possibly have. So it's really cool to, to have the options to start small and, as we mentioned, scale up as, as you go along. Yeah, and um, the the good thing with that is like what you said, scalable. So you can start really, you know, small, and then you know, when when you when you're when you're when you get bigger audiences or you're running a bigger show, maybe that's uh, that's a good time to really invest in more uh, products. And uh, the flexibility is number one. You know, we you can start small, and then you can just grow it as you as your you know as your life production grow uh, as your life production requirement grows as well um yeah. and you know we we have we have different users of this life production here in the middle east here in our region even in our you know our customer base in turkey but uh, i think you have prepared to us some some of your key users uh key customers that are using web uh, black magic design web broadcast solutions can you share some of them to us yeah we've had we've had a really i mean i've, I've picked these stories based on the last the last 12 months because we've had some really interesting um case studies that have popped up over um over that period of time um so the first and form, first one i want to, to kind of touch upon um was a big broadcaster in the uk um which is uh, channel five they run a program called the gadget show which is a, a consumer um based television series which looks at um as the name suggests lots of gadgets electronics um, and kind of reviews them and, and gives um, context as to how they might be used and, and the quality of those products. Now, this is a, a, a program which um, normally is run using a 20 person OB crew. And obviously when the pandemic hit, they had to reduce the number of people that were allowed on uh, onto the production set um, and they had to social distance everybody. So that crew was drastically reduced in, in terms of its size. And they approach us around a, about a way to be able to deliver with a smaller crew and still have the ability to um, uh, kind of produce the content, bring in graphics, bring in media, um, and then also to interact with their audience through platforms like Zoom or through um, other web conferencing um, applications. And they utilize the A10 Mini Pro to do that. Uh, and that allowed them to get back online um, and continue to produce that content, albeit with a much, a much smaller crew. So that was a really, a really nice one to, to be involved with. And the second one on there is the um, is um, a trans DJ or electronic dance music DJ Darude, which is strange because this is music that I was listening to going back nearly kind of 20 years when I was a teenager. Um, and yeah, it was strange to be approached by kind of a, um, a DJ of his caliber who wanted to be able to continue um, doing his DJ sets, albeit he couldn't do that during lockdown. So he moved all of his content onto Twitch um, and delivered live DJ sets from his home um, with a pocket camera and with um, the A10 Mini Pro as well. So a nice little, nice little use case there. Um, then we have um, a couple of other examples of all in there. We've got a uh, music example, which is Playing for Change. Um, they're an organization which brings together a, a diverse mix of musicians from all different genres performing in their local environment. 
um, concerts are broadcast via their own YouTube channel, um, which has more than 2 million subscribers. Um, and what they did was they built a, a small production setup um, with the A10 Mini Pro, with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera as well. And then the last one in there was a focal press production. Um, so this is something which uh, is it's a medical centre that provides acute and subacute um, a care and it handles more than 32,000 admissions um, annually. And in addition to town hall meetings and things like that, the focal point productions um, began streaming frequent Facebook uh, live sessions featuring clinicians, hospital leadership. Um, in some cases, they were able to publish online a, a leisure programme uh, to promote social events and things like that that so a really diverse mix of productions utilizing our products but one of the ones that kind of is is i'm most kind of astounded by and, and really really impressed by is the implementation um at the emmy awards so the production company at the emmy awards actually put together 100 separate um live production kits for all of their um california based nominees and what this actually was made up of was, was a pocket cinema camera 6k um, and an a10 mini pro with a monitor and a light ring which you might be able to make out from the pictures there and they effectively sent out 100 of these kits to all of the nominees across California at the Emmys so that they could have identical setups in their homes um, and meant all the content was being it looked the same um, and it was being sent into the the main broadcast in exactly the same way so that it ensured um, consistency across all of the um, the setups from the nominees which is, is staggering to think they were able to do that it massively improved the production value than if they were doing it by their own laptops or their own phones for example ensured that consistency and they did it on a scale of 100 separate kits which again just proves the the reliability and the trust um in those particular products so that's one um one particular case study that i found um really interesting this year and it was one that we were really pleased to be involved with um as as black magic Wow. Okay. So you know, with um, the that awards um, body that created that hundred kits of that, that's really amazing. And and you know, one one cool thing about that is about the consistency. Um, you know, it's going to be very very difficult for the whole production team to have different um, different quality and different uh, resolution and image quality that's coming from different. So having having a kit with with an atom mini and and a camera a pocket camera can really do a lot and that's actually a very good combination that we see in our region especially that you know and for sure globally we're in you know someone's looking to start a, a live production you know setup he might probably have a pocket camera and you know basically get something uh like an atom mini or mini extreme to use that to switch which actually, I just want to um, jump on to some questions, if that's okay with you, Darren. Yeah, let's, let's dive into the questions. We've <laughs> kind of come to the end of, of the things that I wanted to, to show you guys. So yeah, if we dive into some questions and uh, see, what, see what everyone's got for me. Okay, so well, the first question that we have is um, actually from a reseller asking what are we using right now for our set. So very quickly, I'll just, just run them through it. So. Um, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't have a pocket camera right now because uh, it's out there for loan. But I'm using our our USA broadcast for our camera right now, and I have an Atomini Extreme running here, and I can just switch to uh, different uh, sources. So let's say if I if I want to show you, I'll just cut to the image of our for Atomini right here. So that is our Atomini uh, running running our. Um, running our show right now. So uh, let's switch back to our, um, to our split. And basically, that's it. It's very simple. I have a, I have a two camera setup. I have an Ursa broadcast. I know it's SDI, so we had to convert it to HDMI just to go through this. Uh, we have our microphone embedded to our, to our camera. So I don't use any of the microphone inputs of, your, of our Atom Mini Extreme right here. And we're streaming it. Uh, using this setup. Um, okay, so and I, I, I just I just want to welcome. Uh, you know, we have we have uh, viewers from our reseller channel partners in the region. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, you know who you are. You know, I've seen all your greetings in our in our comment section, and of course our office in Istanbul as well. They're 
watching us right now. So, okay, there are questions here. So first is, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> I, I lost it. Okay, will this work? Uh, will the CCU work with a Blackmagic Design Micro Studio 4K camera? Question from Janan. Okay, so we were doing, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. So the idea with um, when you're using other cameras that are not pocket cameras is we do have our micro um, converters, which will convert from HDMI to SDI, because what we need to do in this instance is convert the, um, the camera control um, between the SDI protocol that we normally use uh, to HDMI and vice versa, dependent on the switcher that you're using. Um, I believe... Um, the, the last update I heard was we had to do some tweaks to make this work um, effectively on the micro studio camera because it uses a slightly um, it's, it's slightly different. Um, but I think it's something that we are we are working towards. So you can use it on the other um, SDI based cameras. I think we're we're addressing the the micro studio camera specifically. Yes, and um, you know going on the camera conversation. So we we have one viewer asking any camera recommendation under 1000 dirham range so around 250 us dollars now the good thing with we keep on saying that of course you can use your pocket cameras you can use ppz cameras but the good thing with that is the the switcher comes with an hdmi input so technically as long as your camera provides you an hdmi output then the atom mini can actually accept that is that right darren yeah, that's correct. And um, and one thing to point out as well is um, one of the really nice features of the A10 Minis is that they, ha they have scalers on all of the inputs as well. So whereas with um, traditional switches, you might have to um, convert the outputs of the camera to make sure that they all match to be all, say, 1080p 30, for example, as a video format. The Atom Minis will actually convert your incoming video feeds to your master production format. So if you set the, the format of the switcher to 1080p 30, as an example, um, it will convert incoming 720 signals, 1080p 25, 1080p 60. It will convert them all to 1080p 30 ready to, to be broadcast. So yeah. it means you can bring in a variety of different cameras without having to worry about them having the same format. Yeah, cool. Because Good thing you mentioned that because we have a question from from Celine, which is basically you answered it, which is uh, can I mix and match the video format for inputs? So yeah, basically yes. answer is yes. <laughs> and uh, again, we have a question from Ibrahim: Can the Atom Mini Pro stream to custom RTMP addresses? Yep. So with the um, with the uh, the XML that's created when you uh, when you save the settings of the A10 Mini Pro, you can actually dive in and edit the XML. So if you're happy to um, to go into that, just open it within a text edit file. You can add um, custom RTMP services into that. So we have a number of, of stock ones that I showed you in there. So I showed you Facebook, Twitch. Um, uh, YouTube and Restream, for example. But if you wanted to add in other services, then you can go in and you can drop those in. And there's some really handy uh, videos if you jump onto to YouTube of people who've who've uh, kind of demonstrated how to uh, create custom um, XML files to do that. So if you just jump onto those platforms, they'll be able to show you how to do it. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a question from Jacob: What kind of SSD drive is useful for recording eight inputs and program? Uh, what's the data rate required? I think he's yeah, talking about that. the ISO, extreme ISO, which is... Yeah, so the, the, it's a very, very good question, actually. Um, so, yeah, when you're working with the A10 Mini Pro ISO range, what this is allowing um, you to do is to record not only the program output, but all of your ISO feeds at the same time, which is really useful if you want to go back and post-produce um, the content and, and repurpose the content, maybe give a highlights package, for example, or just adjust any errors you might have made during the, the live production. Now, when you're working um, with the ISO, it will um, it will record at Hyperdeck High, um, which is there's a number of different um, options you have um, within the, the streaming settings, but it will record at Hyperdeck High. Um, now, if you're in 1080p60, so let's go the kind of highest bandwidth um, case scenario. If you're recording at 1080p60, that creates a video stream or a recording stream of approximately 70 megabits per second. So if you times that by nine, given that you've got eight um, ISO feeds plus your program, you're talking 630 megabits 
per second, um, plus some headroom there for any of your graphics that it saves and all of your audio channels as well. You need to be looking at a drive which has a consistent write speed of 700 megabits per second um, to allow you to capture to all of that. So we haven't got some any specific drives that we've certified just yet. That'll be something we do as soon as we can. But if you're looking for a drive now, um, you're going to be looking for something with that consistent write speed of 700 megabits a second. Mm -hmm. Which are, you know, normally that's, you know, most SSD, SSD drives can actually provide that sustained speed as well right yeah. so. that's the that's the key there is that sustained and consistent speed because while some drives will advertise they have that speed that's kind of a theoretical and potential speed that they can reach you just need to make sure that it has that consistent write speed consistency is the key so we'll, we'll <laughs> take note of that <laughs> okay we have another one from sultan um hi how can i do two live stream in same time but sources different sources in same platforms Two sources at the same time with different platforms. So I think he's asking if we can stream to two different um, destinations using the same. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it's just a case of uh, of using the same, uh, you pushing out the same program feed to two separate sources, um, then yeah, you have different options there. So your first option would be to use the restream um, service. So that's the one that I showed you. Let me actually. If I jump into my software again, I can show you once more. So when you jump into the output settings of um, of the ATEM here, and we go into live stream, you'll see there is a service called restream.io. Now, the restream.io, that's a third-party service. It's a paid-for service, but it allows you to send a single stream, which can then be distributed to platforms, um, multiple platforms like YouTube, Facebook, um, Twitter, all simultaneously. Your alternative option to that is if you don't want to use that service, you could, as an alternative, this is a bit of a workaround, is to stream to one service using the Ethernet output from um, the A10 Mini Pro and then use the USB output to um, to send the signal to a separate service. So you could go into um, OBS with the USB output and send that to a second service, for example. So you've got a couple of options there. The easiest, I would say, is to use something like a Restream, um, the Restream service, just because it allows you to send one stream and then they handle all of the bandwidth and um, all of the network there to send it to multiple destinations. Or they can get a web presenter HD, right? So you basically have your Atom Mini streaming in one platform and then have another streaming in another. You can take one of the outputs. Absolutely, yeah. If, if they're happy to add in additional additional hardware, then yeah, go, go to something like the, the web presenter HD, as you said, which has that additional um, streaming encoder built in uh, and, and go that way. Yeah, okay, cool. And then there's another one um, from Zahid. Uh, BM Pocket camera control, camera control from Atom Mini is possible through SDI cable if you convert HDMI to SDI and back for longer length of cable. Yeah, so we have um, a, a new product or relatively new product called the micro converter um, SDI to HDMI bidirectional. Um, now, if you want to extend your um, your cable runs, so um, theoretical distance on a HDMI cable is around 10 meters. If you're getting close to that, you probably want to extend it with an SDI um, cable. So you'd need a bi-directional converter at the datum end and one at the camera end. And basically, it's going to convert HDMI to SDI. You'll have two SDI cables which run between the two boxes for a back and forth um, communication and then HDMI at the other end. So you need two micro converter bi-directionals and your SDI cables and HDMI cables. Yeah, and uh, which brings us to a topic wherein some of our users are actually using the Blackmagic Studio cameras or an Ursa broadcast that has an SDI uh, inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, using that um, converter can actually do a bi-directional um, uh, conversion. Uh, and yes, the answer is yes. Um, we have a question. It's a very long question from John Sen, um, which um, to shorten it, he wants to know if uh, the system will allow him to use two or three inputs in one picture at the same time. May, may I answer this, Darren, this part? Yeah, please do. Yeah. So basically, uh, using, using the Atom Mini Extreme, you will have the ability. There's a function that Darren said a while ago wherein you can have uh, a special function called SuperSource. And, um, you know, 
mentioning super source, the super source is only available in our bigger atom range, um, specifically the 2ME, the 4ME, and the Constellation 8K. And now it's available with the Atom Mini Extreme. So with that, you will have the ability to have your, um, like what you said, you have your Zoom input, your guest input, your camera input, and your presentation inputs. And then you can different windows that would allow you to um, to run that. So if I can switch to my full screen here for from Darren's feed, so you can see that uh, you have that um, you have that capability that is um, that's available for you to use. Uh, okay, we have another question uh, from Binish. How do we get the best um, audio clarity via the mic input? Yeah, so with the, um, I mean, I, I showed it a little bit um, earlier with the, the Fairlight audio mixer, um, and it will depend on your, obviously your setup, your the room that you're in and what you need to adjust um, on on the microphone itself to get the best possible um, the best possible sound for you. And it depends what you want to do as well, because you can be quite creative with audio. As I mentioned, you might want to create slightly warmer tones in your voice to, to come across as a kind of a, a warmer personality. But for me personally, when I, um, if I, again, I'll just open up um, my software here. Um, the things that I changed within within mine um, were I added in a, um, a threshold here just to um, make sure that my voice wasn't going too high and we weren't clipping at any point in time. Um, and I just added a bit of warmth to, to that as well. But you've got so many different tools within the, the Fairlight Audio um, package that you, you can kind of be as creative as you want to be and you can change many things to get something which sounds right. Um, but often the case for me, and you'll find this a lot, it's, it's the environment that you're in. Um, I've had to kind of accommodate um, the adjustments that I've made in my microphone settings based on the room that I'm in because behind the camera here, there's a really just a, a plain and blank wall which is reverberating a lot of the sound back towards me. So I've had to limit certain things in this room and then I've got some soft fixtures off to my left-hand side again just to, to limit some of the, the audio that's bouncing around this room. So yeah, kind of control your environment as much as you can is the first piece of advice. And when you've done as much as you can to control the physical environment, then you can dive into the, the audio tools on the ATEM to, to really tweak what you, you want to adjust. Yeah, I, I mean, if I may, if I may add to that, uh, to what Darren said, of course, yeah, you have your, your Fairlight audio control available in your ATEM. But at the same time, uh, one thing that I've really noticed and it's a it's a very good thing to have because uh, you know the preamps that are available in our pocket camera range, they're pretty good. They're 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 very good uh, to be used as a preamp. And uh, most of our users that that are using the combination of an ex, uh, of an Atom Mini and a pocket cinema camera, 4K and 6K and the 6K Pro, um, they are actually getting a very good. Um, audio that's that when they embed it to to the camera itself because the camera itself has a very good preamp and they have a very uh very good uh preamp levels as well so with that they can just you know embed the audio to the camera and then send it to that and most of the time there's not a lot of um changes that they have to do using the audio software control uh, do you do you also observe that um that thing in your absolutely reading? yeah so yeah, so with, with my camera, I'm, I'm utilizing um, some of the inbuilt tools within the camera, um, first and foremost. And then it's when it's reaching the ATAR, I'm just doing some final adjustments. And as I say, that's just really, realistically, it's because I'm in a very, very small room. Um, so with, with hard walls and hard surfaces, the, the audio is able to bounce around a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to control that as much as I possibly can. Um, I'm probably creating quite a nice illusion that I'm in a really nice building with lovely brick walls, but um, yeah, I'm cheating it a little bit with, with the setup I have here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, for our last question, so again, we were, we kind of you know uh, run uh, to our time limit, but last question from Jerome, uh, how to minimize or remove hisses on my two mic input. So if I may answer that, um, the, you know, the, the good thing with, with the atom range is that you have your audio control and you know sometimes things can easily be fixed with the five band equalizer that's that that is available in your 
in your audio software control. And one of the things that I normally do is if I run on the EQ and then identify which of those, you know, um, if which of the noise or the hiss or, or the humming, which is the low frequency and the hissing, which is the high frequency noise, you can easily um, remove that using EQ. Now there are, there are different other tools in there like, um, you know, of course, apart from the from the EQ controls, you you have dynamics control as well in their compressor and limiter, and th you know, combination of all these things can easily remove that. But I got a lot of um, I got really lucky. <laughs> I must say, when I just have to run on my, um, I have to just look at my um, EQ, the five band EQ, and normally it does wonders for me. So. So yeah, actually, that brings us to the end of this session. Again, thank you so much, Darren, for your time. And for you, all of our viewers who have questions, please feel free to message us, to email us, and we will be very happy to respond to you guys for that. Um, for you, Darren, do you have any last message for our viewers right now? Well, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to, to all you guys at MediaCast and specifically you, Larry, for uh, obviously participating in, in today's session. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure to, to, to speak with you all and to uh, to answer some of your questions. Um, yeah, web broadcasting is, is a passion of mine and um, hopefully you guys all get a lot from it as you start either start your journeys and uh, into web broadcasting or you're enhancing your live production workflows. Hopefully we can be um, a part of that as well so yeah thank you very much for your for your time today and thank you larry for uh for, for running the session as well thank you thank you so much for your time and like what i said in the beginning this is our this is our kick off session for our mini series of our virtual summit and tomorrow i just want to invite you because tomorrow we will be uh, having a conversation with our friend George from, and I think George is watching us right now. Hi, George, if you're watching. But uh, I will be again with George tomorrow, and I will be, um, or we will be speaking about or talking about the new Pocket Cinema Camera uh, 6K Pro. And I think uh, most of you guys are very interested in, uh, in, in that product. So again, tomorrow at 2 p.m., we will be going live again in the same platform in Facebook Live, and we will stream it to you live. And George will be joining us from Manchester. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Darren, for your time, and thank you for all our viewers out there. So we will see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.